Hi, this is Lana Jones. I'd like to show you how I do my binding for my projects, my wall hangings and my quilts. I prefer a half inch binding over a quarter inch, just my preference. First I'm going to do is sew my binding to the edges of my project at a half an inch, making sure to miter the corners. Okay, at my iron I'm going to take and I'm going to press this so that it is all nice and um, thread sunk down into my um, project and then I'm going to take it and on the back side I am going to put steam a seam two quarter inch along my edges here so I'm going to put a piece along here and I'm going to put a piece along here And I won't pull the paper off yet. I don't need to at this time. Now I'm going to turn it over and on this side I am going to um, press the binding so that I have a nice crease along the edge of my project. Then turn it over and I'm going to press it so that I have nice folds going this way and then nice folds going this way along the edge. Okay. Now I'm going to take and fold this down and press this so it just touches the project. And the reason why is because this is a half inch. I want this part a little bit bigger so that when I fold this over that folded edge goes past my seam line. Okay. Now I'm going to do this one as well. Oops, let's keep that, fold it down like that. And then fold this one down. And so it just touches the project. I will now also take this piece right here and fold that down and press a crease there. You want all your creases so you get nice miters on all sides. Okay, so now I can take off the paper. Okay, now that I've removed all the paper, I will take and I will fold this over so that that folded edge goes past the seam line and press that into place. Okay. Then I'll take this side, fold that over, and press that into place. Okay, so now I have a nice miter on the back side and I have a beautiful miter on the front side. So now we're gonna go and sew this. Our options for sewing this are obviously we can do the back by hand. Okay, um, we can stitch in the ditch because we will always make it, we'll always hit the back side when we stitch in the ditch because we have pulled this past the uh, seam line. Okay, Sometimes we don't have a ditch to stitch in as I'll show you in um, uh, a project that's in the sofa presentation. Um, so I'm going to do a blind hem on this one which means that I'm going to turn it to the back. I am going to take my binding and flip it to the back here and I'll be stitching a blind hem right along the edge here. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, at our machine, the first thing you wanna do is pull out your top and your bottom threads because we can't turn a corner. So we'll have to have the threads long so that we can tie them off and tuck them into the binding. Okay, so I would do um, each side We'll start here. I'm going to start way up at the corner. I'm going to turn my binding to the back. So set your machine up for a very narrow, very short stitch length um, for a blind hem. I'm going to make sure my little tab is right next to my project. And it's going to take stitches in the air. As long as your fabric is moving, this um, the uh, machine doesn't care. Okay. So now it's going to go take a bite out of the um, fabric here right there and then it's going to come back and stitch stitches in the air I 
like to stop with the needle in the fabric when I'm adjusting. Okay, so here's my blind hem from the back side. And from the front side, you don't see any stitches. It didn't go through because the stitches go into the batting. So now you have a nice look on the front. You have a nice clean look on the back. And I have my long threads here so that I can knot those off and tie them in. And then I would just complete, um, complete the rest of the quilt in that fashion.